I really don't think that what I'm about to talk about will be a problem for most traditional martial artists. Because I think this ethic I'm about to talk about here is something that I have heard espoused by pretty much everyone who's ever trained me. But if you go on the internet and listen to some of the internet tough people and some of the people who just want to fight versus learning the whole entirety of a martial art. That's what I think you're going to come up against. What uh, this other YouTuber I was listening to the other day, her name is Layla Jenkins. I'm going to put a link to her uh, original video below this one. Um, I felt like this section of her video is something that really pertains to the martial arts. Not in terms of uh, technique, but in terms of how we should conduct ourselves. Because what I notice, and feel free to disagree with me, is I feel like when a lot of people start off in the martial art, they're really just interested in learning how to fight. They're not really interested in learning how to use this as a thing that's going to bring about self-improvement you know, become a form of exercise. I think all that comes later in the journey when you put in it, put all the techniques and things that you learn in its proper space, in its proper place. When you realize as you go along and you mature that even though this may be one of your favorite activities, it's really not a substitute for God. It is not a substitute for any sort of moral or religious teaching. If anything, it is a way for you to have a a venue for you to express the religious beliefs and spiritual practices that you should have. So like, I guess one way of saying it is you don't necessarily need to have a Christian martial art. You as a Christian should be making your martial arts practice. You should be practicing it in a Christian way, in a way that Christ would want to practice, would want you to practice it. And this snippet right here, Maybe I'll conclude this in Bible self-defense and maybe I'll include this in I'm not the martial arts instructor for you. If you have a problem with the following, then I definitely am not the martial arts instructor for you. So let me see if I can get this to record what she has to say. Bear with me if it doesn't go through right. The conversation. And I don't want these, these strongholds to be passed down from generation to generation. It has to stop now. It has to stop now. And also, another thing, this whole thing, someone hits you and you hit them back. The Lord said, that's not my word. That's not my word. According to Matthew 5, 38, Jesus said, you have heard that it said, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. But Jesus says, but I say to you, do not show opposition against an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, you turn the other. And he says, turn the other toward him also. And then when you jump down to 43, it says, you have heard that it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may prove yourselves to be sons of our of your father who is in heaven. And then Jesus says, for he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sets rain on the righteous and unrighteous. Jesus said, we got to operate in love at all times. And hitting somebody back because they hit you is not operating in love. Jesus said, who taught you that? Who taught you that you hit somebody back because they hit you? Who taught you that? That's not the instruction of the Lord. That's not the instruction of my word. That's the instruction of culture. That's the instruction of culture. And the Lord said that we are ingraining that in our children to follow culture versus God. The Lord said that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. And the Lord Now, you know that can be dangerous if the person is trained in martial arts for you to automatically strike back if somebody strikes you. I know that um, once you get into some of the deeper levels of martial arts, they will tell you that there are, you will hear the theory that there are no blocks in karate. Or there are no blocks in the martial arts. Everything is an offensive attack. I can see that and I can understand that. 
But a lot of us know very well that when we were taught, we were taught that our first response was supposed to be a defensive response. And if we stick true to that, that means we should be aware, paying attention to situational awareness and body language and the tone and feeling of how things are going in an interaction. Don't stand too close to people. You know, try to use your tennis of courtesy and self-control from Taekwondo. Um, you know, a soft answer turns away wrath in the Bible. So that if it comes to where there is a time and place for everything, you civilian really should not be trying to strike first. You should be trying not to strike or throw or anything if if you if if you can help it at all. Because it can be very dangerous for someone who knows how to and where to and with what to attack a part of the body to automatically go to that because someone is trying to hurt them. Yes, that could be dangerous. That's why turning of the cheek tends to work very well for civilians, because if you follow that doctrine, it doesn't mean stand there and just let people beat you to death. Nobody is saying that. Nobody is staying to stand there unless someone hurts you. It's basically saying that you don't have to respond with violence all the time if somebody wants to initiate violence. Now, I think you have enough common sense to know because another rebuttal you get is, well, what if I can't, what if it's just happened? I just can't help. I think that if you're trying to defend yourself and a person just keeps, if you're trying to be defensive and they just keep coming and 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 coming, and coming, and coming, and coming I think that your common sense will kick in enough so that you know, well, this is one time when one simple block or even one simple counter strike is not going to do it. I'm going to have to hurt this person. Yes, those situations happen. Those situations sh should be rare. And those situations tend to be the exception rather than the rule. If you're honest with yourself. Because unless you're dealing with people who are truly violent and truly unhinged. And, you know, just truly super dangerous. You can avoid fights. You can de-escalate fights. And even if it comes to violence, you can respond with the appropriate amount of force if you want to. You got interrupted there. I'm sorry. You only go to combat if your life is truly you only go to combat if your life is truly on the line. And I think that you will know the difference if you are not obsessed with some type of killer warrior fantasy. Thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts and peace. Walk in love, people. Walking in love doesn't make you weak because it actually takes a lot more strength to be loving when others are not peace oh and p.s i'm not saying this like i have this down perfectly i don't but i'm trying i am trying i'm on the journey with you peace